Grab some coffee, a Mountain Dew, maybe both. A storm is brewing, the Brainstorm. Welcome to the Brainstorm with Matt and Mike. Hey, welcome to the Brainstorm with Matt and Mike. Uh, man, today we're going to talk about really uh, the consumer journey, initial awareness to unwavering loyalty when it comes to the consumer buying journey of a product or service. In that attraction phase, Mike, uh, from a business perspective, we I, I've always referred to it as the attraction phase. From a consumer perspective, it's like your brand awareness phase. And so, mm-hmm. uh, you know, we can call it whatever, the attraction phase, the awareness phase, uh, it depends on which way you're looking at it. From a business, you're trying to attract them. From a consumer, you're just learning of them, which is bringing in awareness, right? And so really, you know, the whole goal at this stage is simply to attract them to your business, right? And so, Mike, let's get, let's get started within that attraction phase to help uh, kind of our viewers and the folks that are joining us today understand what that really looks like for them and their business or, or their customers. Right. So every, every business is going to be different, right? And so where they turn to, to, to find a solution or to even become aware that there's a solution, right. oftentimes they don't even know what solution to look for. And statistically, we look at Google search keywords, key terms that are being used. And oftentimes you find that people know they have a problem, a challenge, a frustration, a desired outcome they don't know what that solution is. Sometimes they know that there's a solution provider or a pool of uh, solution providers out there, but sometimes they don't connect the dots yet. Right. And so they're not only becoming aware of your brand, they might be becoming aware that there is even a solution to the problem they're facing. Right. And so what we want to do is be visible to our ideal client, in your case, your ideal client, customer, patient, and speak to the solution that you provide that helps them overcome that pain point or, and ultimately that desired outcome that they're, that they're wanting to achieve. And, and so it don't, I guess your, your service or product doesn't have to be this niche type thing or this specialty type service or product. In, in the case, like you were just talking about, Mike, you were talking about that uh, consumers might not even realize that there is a solution to their problem, right? But it also could be, I guess, it's the same premise if it's a, a common Use right. or a common need and, and a common solution. I guess the only difference there is now as a business, you have to create uh, the awareness or the attraction message or graphics or video, whatever it is that you're creating it in. You just have to create it in, in a more engaging fashion if it's something that's more common. Yeah, I think you have to really, really key in on your differentiators yeah. and how you serve them, how you make that experience better for them. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, so still- I mean, if you're like a landscaper or a home builder uh, or even B2B perspective, right, and it's a common type of service or product, the differentiator is the key, right, and how you convey that differentiator. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that, that's, a, that's a very good point. And, and so where do they go from here, Mike? What happens after that? So you got the message out there. They're seeing it. They're trying to understand it. It's so, a brand so- awareness. So the key there is to understand where are they going when they're at this stage of the process. Mm. If they haven't yet identified you as a potential provider, solution provider, uh, person who could sell them their product or service they need that solves this pain point, uh, gives them their desired outcome, then we've got to identify where that audience is most likely to be investing time. Are they going to industry events like conferences, trade shows, uh, especially if it's B2B? Um, B2C, are they more on social media? Which social media channels? What type of content are they engaging with? What type of people are they following and connecting with? What industry publications, whether it's online or offline, where where are they geographically located? Where are they traveling? Do they, they drive down a certain road? If it's a local, you, you know, uh, consumer-based service provider, are they going to see a billboard? Are they going to see, are they walking into a certain store? Basically, where do they shop? Where are they at? Where are they at when they're looking for, or they could be made aware uh, of your service, your solutions, your products. Right. And you've got to meet them where they're at at that stage so that we can get their attention and then compel them to take the next step. Yeah, that makes perfect sense to me. 
So not only are we figuring out what the challenge is, the differentiator your business has from others, uh, now we're also understanding like where does the consumer or the consumer of your services product, where do they shop? Like how do you find them in order to pick out the, re- the, the best tactic in order to convey your message? That's right. That's what I love when people talk about marketing and advertising, right? And so people always talk about, they always use marketing and advertising as the same thing. And so what I love about where you're going with that is it's not, you know, marketing and advertising are two completely different things. Advertising is much more simplistic in nature is simply taking the message and conveying it in the right tactic, right? TV, advertising, radio, advertising, even digital is advertising, Mm -hmm. right? The marketing piece is how you got there. Like who's the target market? Where are they? What's the demographic, geographic, uh, what's their pain points? What's the best message? What's the differentiator? Marketing is what enables you to advertise. Mm-hmm. And so, but so many people use those two things as the same thing, really, mm-hmm. synonymously. And it's just not. Marketing advertising is so much different. And so in this particular case, we talked a lot about strategic marketing strategies, right? And so uh, what is it? Cohesive marketing strategies, I meant to say. And so now we're really just kind of, when we convey the message, it just was simply advertising. So that's the key is knowing what message to convey. And and so if, if commonly your service, your product is not as common. And when I say as common, I mean something that's extremely rare uh, or no commonly used. Yeah. Something that's more more common. common. If it's not more common, then what you need to do is make sure that you speak to the pain first. Right. Help them under, understand that you understand. Are the pain. you experiencing? You can relate. Right. Does this right. happen to you? Right. Those right. types. If you of feel things. this, right, there is a better way. But in the more common, you're not the only right. one. Yeah, that, that's no doubt. And then you speak to how you can help them overcome mm. that challenge, overcome that frustration. So you know, we're talking about where the buyer is or where the consumer is might, but just briefly talk to us how important it is for a well-rounded strategy. So if you're in a rural area, you mentioned this many rural town, you might see a billboard, right? And that mm-hmm. might be the best place, best place, place to put it, to put your advertising. But what about kind of that six touch average that consumers need uh, that most everybody needs? You need to see it over and over and over. Talk to me about what, What's the best from a cohesive perspective you, using a multiple tactics? You know, the reality is you got to use multi-channel, right? right? So we like to use the term omni-channel, omni-channel and multi-channel. It's a different show. We'll talk about that, but those aren't one and the same. They're similar in some ways, but they are also different. Uh, but you want to meet them again, wherever they're at. So if your consumer, your, your prospective customer and customers are investing time in a, in a multitude of channels, you want to be visible across all of those channels and really meet them at all of these stages. Right. Um, Not just pick one and say, okay, well, I'll put the billboard up. Right. And that's going, yeah, if I put the billboard up, they're going to come. But if you put a billboard up and then the, and then they go home or to their business, wherever they consume your products and services at, and then they see it on social media or they see it on display advertising Mm -hmm. or they see it on television, they might hear it on the radio as they're going by the billboard. Uh, so, um, there's, you know, having a, a strategy that's more cohesive in nature is much, much better and will actually get people to convert much, much quicker. Yeah, the key is they may have 5, 10, 20 micro interactions with you just at the awareness phase before something triggers them to take the next step. And so you're going to need to reach them in as many ways as possible. And so you definitely want to be where where you know they're going to be at and everywhere you think they're going to be at. The more time, energy, effort you put into understanding your consumers' behaviors and what is important to them, the more likely you are to reach them and compel them to take that next step. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. Um, I know that we talk to uh, clients all the time, and, and obviously we break this down into those small little tactical steps, the logistical steps of the strategy in order to do that. 
Um, it's it's vital. It's important. I understand. I understand it because we're also consumers and we're also buyers from our business perspective, from our home uh, perspective. And so, you know, we we shop the same way that we create these strategies. That's yeah. The key, so that so you just hit the nail on the head, Matt. Here's the key: you need to be able to put yourself in your customer's shoes, not your shoes, your customer's shoes. Mm. And once you're in your customer's shoes and you see through their glasses, their lenses, and think about what that journey looks like for them. Now, the best way to do that is to go actually ask some of them. Right. Pull some of them. Talk to them. Ask them what's important uh, at each stage of their decision-making journey, how they go about making decisions, what's important to them, what's not important to them. Right. And make sure that you focus in on those key factors. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. You know, it's also something good for a referring business too, because we were talking about omni-channel and having a, a different messages, maybe even really similar messages across different tactics and different channels. Um, it makes it easier for people to refer someone too, refer a business or refer a service, because if it's something that the person I'm referring to has also seen, then the credibility increases and it makes it easier on the person doing the referring. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I've come across that quite a bit over the past, you know, eight to 10 years. And I'm always telling people, especially the people say, like, oh, I get all referral business. <laughs> well, you'll get even more referral business if you advertise as well as new business. Right. So mm -hmm. but remove the new business thing. You'll get more referral business simply because now the people they're referring to, you've added the credibility to because they've seen you. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that definitely works. Uh, and now we're going to really focus more on part of the conversion phase, kind of the initial consideration phase, because we're really looking at this from a consumer perspective. As Mike was saying earlier, it's, it's important to understand what your consumer's journey is in order for you to create the best strategic marketing plan for your business in order to attract them. And so this is, you don't just attract them and then boom, they're converted. And so early on in the attraction phase, you have this consideration phase, Mike. Talk to us a little bit about that. So after you've built awareness and you have, like a magnet, pulled them in to you, what you've done is you've helped them recognize that they do have a need, you understand their need, and that you have potential solutions to solve that, that challenge problem and provide them their desired outcome. And so during that consideration stage, what's happening is you really should be nurturing them. And what you're really doing is building a kind of a knowledge authority with them. You, you are the expert at this subject matter, and you are the person that can guide them from where they are today to the transformation they want tomorrow. Yeah, and I so like from that. where they are now to where they want to be in the future. I like that. I know you and I both tell all of our clients and all of our strategists here at Splash Shiny Media, tell all of our clients that what, what our goal is is to position our client as the expert in their industry mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, who doesn't want to do business with the expert? That's right. right? I mean, everybody wants to do business with the expert. Um, and, and you know, unless there's a, a, a price point, unless there's something that's keeping you from doing business with the expert, but even then, even if you're not doing business directly, you're learning from them, right? Mm -hmm. They're still the ones that's teaching you the, the, the content or the direction to go in. So, that's a very good point. And the longer your journey, your sales cycle is, that journey that your customers normally take on average from initial awareness to the initial conversion, uh, the, the more engagement, the more nurturing it's going to require, the mm. more times you're going to need to touch them. So you need to have really compelling content that really speaks to their pain points and also speaks to any um, kind of... Uh, you know, things that they might like misinterpret about right, right. what your, your offering provides, right. um, any uh, reluctance they might have, any barriers that would keep them from moving forward. This is also where that differentiator is spelled out too, right? We talked a little bit it earlier be, about yeah. the differentiator. And so in the early consider and the initial consideration stage, it's always good, but it, especially if it's a product or service that is, there's a lot of them, right? Like you, like there's a home builder. There's a ton of home builders you can choose from. So what makes you different 
uh, in the consideration phase of not only building right. a home in that example, but using you as right. the home builder. So at that stage, they may be determining, hey, can I afford to custom build a house or do I need to go to a spec builder? Educate. What's the difference in cost per square foot? Right. Why does this home builder think a cost per square foot is X while this one thinks it's considerably more or less? Right. Uh, what materials should I be using? How much should I pay for a lot? Can I build any floor plan on any lot? Mm -hmm. um, how do I align those things? How, how long do does find? custom home building take? And so, so on and so forth. Just in that right. one industry, we could. there's so much information that people will normally go about consuming as they're making decisions about which path to take you know, as they move forward. Right. And so you want to be the person that provides them guidance there. If they're not right for you, you want to guide them into a different direction so you don't invest too much time, energy, and effort trying to capture someone who's just not a good fit. Right. But if they are the right fit, you want to make sure that you're positioned as the trusted authority on that subject in that industry that's going to guide them from where they are today uh, and all the way through the process and beyond. Yeah, I know in, in this particular show, you and I didn't really plan to do any tactical-based conversations, but I'll just throw this one out there. This would be a great time uh, in the display world to do some retargeting. And so because obviously if you've done the attraction part and you've gotten them to at least click through, watch a video, read something, understand what the differentiator is, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. If they've gone to some type of content or digital footprint, that you have, now's a great time to retarget them. So through social media Absolutely. outlets, through other websites, and retargeting is extremely well worth it, in so, my opinion. So we know once you've once you've invested time, energy, and, and money oftentimes right, to yeah. pull them in, you've attracted them in that first stage, and now you're trying to, to nurture them and engage them through that consideration stage of their decision-making process. Right. We need to pull them back as frequently as possible and continue to engage them with content that informs them, entertains them, and again, helps continue to build your authority with them. And there's a lot of content out there. People will have messages flying at them left and right, not just in your industry, but in many industries. Every every industry. And, and I mean, so there's keeping so them many advertisements. In. You're right, Mike. I mean, there's advertisements. I, I call it noise. There is a ton of noise in the marketplace yeah. these days. There and, and it could be noise, like you were just saying, not necessarily from your competitors. It could be just simply noise, right? And you got to you got to get through it. Right. So I guess that identifies, you know, going to the attraction phase, getting through the noise. It's like you have to build some, whether it's graphics or text or video, you have to attract them in a way that cuts through all of that. You build great content and then you promote that content. Yeah. And so based on where they're at, what stage they're at, you should know what right. content they're most likely going to be looking for. What answers are they seeking at that stage? So in the consideration phase for your business, you just need to identify that. And then what they need to do is just continue to put it out there in the channels that they are investing time in mm. and pull them back. So one way that we encourage people to do that is use a CRM and use marketing automation and really uh, use a lead magnet to encourage them to access some ultra value content, something high value that they're willing to trade their name and their email address for. Yeah, and, no, that makes perfect sense. And then provide them that immediate value, give before you receive, right? And then from there, continue to uh, send email messages out, retarget them across many channels, whether that's across the web or across social media or, or all of the above. Uh, even in some cases, if we're able to also capture their home address, if it's appropriate, send them a direct mailer or a letter. Mm. I mean, any, any way that we can engage them and keep pulling them back to further them through the funnel, the better. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, I mean, cu customers, you would say that customers are very different from one another, but at the end of the day, the majority, and we're talking about the majority, we're not talking about every single customer type here, right? But the majority of shoppers shop in a pretty consistent manner, right? Like you have to get attracted to the product or service, whatever that is. I mean, you might, let's say you're going to buy a car and you, you might already know you either need or want a car. And so, but you're still having to figure out 
the attraction phase of that, oh, which direction are you going? What kind of car are you buying, right? And then and then you go over, whether you're shopping online or you're shopping in person, now all of a sudden you have that consideration stage of buying that car, right? And so now we're in the conversion stage of actually getting you to buy that car, whatever that car is, whether it's a Honda or Ford. And I guess the bell curve, the people on the extremes, they would already know that they need a car. They already know exactly what car they're going to buy. Wouldn't you say that that's the, ex I guess, the uh, the example of an extreme scenario? Yeah, I mean, so are there people out there that are just extremely decisive? What, what's really happened is they've done their due diligence in advance, and the reality is 56-plus percent of people know or, or, have, or at least that 56, 60% of the way through their buying process before a company even knows they're in the market. Yeah. So if you didn't reach sense. them in that, in those front stages, you're behind the curve. You're, you're fighting a losing battle. And wouldn't you also say, Mike, cause I know we use it quite a bit. And if you're watching on our YouTube channel, uh, you certainly would understand why I'm getting ready to say this, but wouldn't you say that some of the best types of medium to, to convey those messages and to get them to actually convert is through video? Yeah, absolutely. So video is uh, the most impactful form of communication beyond face-to-face, -face. sometimes more impactful yeah, than face-to-face, -face, uh, depending on the video and, and where it's served. And we know that people are using video on social media. They're using it on their website. They're turning to YouTube and looking for product or service demos or reviews. Uh, so, yeah, I think video is an extremely powerful tool, really, that across all the stages. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I definitely agree with that concept. I'm in love with video. I think video is probably the best content out there. So that attraction phase and that conversion phase. Uh, and now we're really talking about the conversion phase. We in, the, in kind of the first part of the conversion phase, Mike, you know, they – have to be aware of the brand, right? They have to have consideration. Um, and so now, uh, now we're talking about actively evaluating if you want to do business with them, right? And so from a consumer perspective, uh, I was pretending that I was a consumer right there. So yeah, I have to, I have to. And you are. Right. And so I have to evaluate if I'm going to do business with whatever it is business that I'm looking at doing business with, whether it's in person, whether it's online or whatever. So or talk both. to me or both, which is usually the case. Yeah. Uh, so talk to me about the guide to conversion from an active evaluation phase, Mike. So once you've attracted your client, right. Potential client, right. You've Suspect, raised prospect. awareness and you've compelled them to take the next step into consideration. Mm -hmm. That consideration phase is where you're nurturing, you're engaging them, whether that's a, a 10 minute process, you know, on a small, maybe retail item, or it's a, a more lengthy process that could be weeks, months, years, even. Uh, once they are, have narrowed their decision and it's down to, hey, they determine I have a problem or I have a desire. I know that there's a, now a solution. I'm aware of a solution to the problem desire. Right. It'll provide me the outcome. Now I've got to determine who I'm going to purchase it from. Right. Which solution provider is right for me. And so hopefully you've done a lot of credibility building through that process and, uh, and added a lot of value up front. If you did, the majority of the battle should be won. Now it's just down to what I call brass tacks. This is on the B2B side where a salesperson is most often going to be most heavily engaged. Yeah. During this stage. Are you assuming that um, at this phase in, in, in the conversation, are you assuming that the buyer or the consumer is their contact information is in a CRM of some sort? Absolutely. Okay. Yep. So, so the need for a CRM in order to maximize, I guess, the, the, the journey mm -hmm. from a business perspective especially is great. Right. Like we have to have a CRM system. Even better if it's a marketing automation CRM system, right? That's right. Right. Which is the two different things, but now they're tethered together. At least for us, it is. Yeah. We tether them together and, and stack, stack uh, technology and solutions to help maximize uh, automation, efficiency, 
and uh, and to and to measure the results that and that works really achieve. really well in both the B two B and the B two C world. That's right. Um, from a workflow perspective, but really you were diving into the nurturing process, right? Mm-hmm. And so that's the reason why I ask you about the CRM because I know if you have a CRM, it's much easier to communicate on an ongoing basis in that nurturing process. So we what we find is that most people are not yet ready to engage when they're at that consideration phase. They don't really, most people don't want to talk to a salesperson yet. Uh, they're, they're still trying to just educate yeah. themselves. They that's want I'm to, just looking around. Yeah. Right. I'm right. just, I, I'm interested enough to get me here, but when, you know, especially when you go out on a car lot and the, the, the salesman comes rushing out to you and you say, no, nah, I'm just looking around. Right. And so what happens is as they go through that process, once they feel that they have informed themselves enough and they're ready and confident to move forward, now they do want to engage someone. Right. And so they've got to, to engage whoever is necessary to answer any final questions as they make that final decision. And so that's where a salesperson, in, again, in the B2B world, even in some B2C worlds, but all, almost always in the B2B world, they're going to engage them. So that might be product demos or it might be, uh, you know, for a uh, home improvement company, that might be them actually coming out to the house and seeing mm. uh, whatever it is they need to improve and having conversation with yep. with that salesperson. Uh, reviews. Reviews are big. Uh, testimonials, references. Yeah. You know, the, the bigger the, the purchase price, the longer the commitment, the, the more vetting they're usually going to do right. before making a decision. And, and, you, and you nailed it on reviews because reviews, I mean, obviously – references is is very big because then you're can engage with one person that's used that's supposedly non-biased that you used mm-hmm. your products or services before but reviews can actually play the part of references as well as the reviews and i know that um out of the hundreds and hundreds of custom websites that we've built over the years reviews is probably in the top three to four pages of the website that people go to oh yeah i but- mean they're they're really major and, and and Google's kind of made it a major player within the optimization piece. Mm-hmm. And so everybody uses reviews when they're doing their shopping these days. That's right. That's right. It's it's the word of mouth, um, you know, mentality. Right. And, so, and depending on your industry, it may have even more um, weight on right. that decision. But it's it it's a it's a, a factor for pretty much everyone today. Yeah. And, you know, I, I don't know the stats on this, so I'm just going to off the cuff, but I would say that 70% of the reviews out there are real, right? And so if 70% of the reviews are real, again, I don't know. Don't hold me to that stat. In fact, I'll look that stat up for us uh, later on a different show and and tell you how close I was or if I was right or wrong. But if 70% are real, you know, you're having an unbiased picture of does the product or service, is it everything that the business is saying it is? Right. And I think the review platforms, the most common ones, have done a great job at filtering through and really identifying uh, ways to eliminate the fake those reviews. fake reviews. Yeah. And, and they're usually, even if they, even if you come across some that look questionable, I, there's some things that you can identify pretty quickly. Hey, did they have 400 reviews done in one day, but they didn't have any on any other day? <laughs> right. That's probably a good indicator. Yeah, yeah. Does everyone good. have the same last name? Right. Is everyone just first name? Right. Uh, do they talk about it as if someone who actually experienced it, or does it sound like they're trying to sell it? Right. And so you can, you can use just some good old common sense and narrow down, is this – is this a legitimate review or not? And if it's not, there might be an indicator that that might be a problem. Yeah. Because it doesn't look like they're going to be authentic and they may not be authentic with how they tell you they're going to serve you. And so, you know, just look at the places that your customer goes to to make those final decisions. Who do they turn to uh, to, to get that final uh, confirmation, peace of mind that, yes, you are indeed the right party to provide them that service or product that they are are looking for and with uh i know we did a show recently if you missed that show you can go to uh, our youtube channel the best place to go really is the brainstormradio.com which is our website there you can subscribe to our podcast you can go to our youtube channel and see all of our past shows but the reason why i say that mike is because 
another great place of driving people is to your social media platform. Mm -hmm. um, and on an earlier show, uh, we talked about the power of social media specifically. I know we broke down in that show almost every single social media platform, if you will, and the advantages or the benefits of advertising or product and service there in that social media platform. But we're talking about millions and millions of people on these social media platforms every day. And I know that you would agree that social media is a great place uh, to do this, right? To, to create this evaluation stage mm -hmm. and kind of move them forward. Right. So this is really, I mean, until they convert, the relationship isn't really established. And so all of this is moving them toward that conversion. And, uh, and again, that's when the relationship starts. And in our next uh, episode, we'll talk more about that phase, right. that conversion phase. And that's really when uh, really that customer experience really begins. And that's where so many people uh, drop the ball because they focus so much on getting them to say yes. And then they mistreat them and don't treat them the way they had hoped to be treated. Right. Beyond that. Yeah, I know that the attraction phase and the conversion phase are vital. They're important, right? But the retention phase and the cross-sell up phase, upsell phase, which we'll talk about in the upcoming show uh, in the series, because this is a series, and so you're watching this show uh, or, or you're, you're joining us for this first of three, and so definitely join us in the next one because that's where, you, where your long-term cash comes from, your long-term revenue Man, again, go to the brainstormradio.com, subscribe to our podcast, uh, go subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, you can view us there if you're listening to us live on the radio. We really appreciate uh, you joining us. We would also love for you to engage us or contact us. You can go to brainstormradio.com and contact us there. We'll be happy to answer any and all questions that you have, whether it's on the show uh, or it's privately. We'd be happy to do that. Mike, thanks for the great content today. Thanks for viewing us on The Brainstorm with Matt and Mike.